Set the bedroom light to orange. Computer, set the second bedroom light to orange. Okay, computer, set the altar lights to orange. Sorry, I didn't find a virtual device named altar light. Computer, set the right altar light to orange. Okay, that looks a little more natural. Still looks a little blue. Okay, anyway, we'll get on with it. This last part, I'm hoping this is the last part. It's the last part for today, I think. Part six. This is about... <clears throat> some of the other crap I went through and that was just on this island I'm gonna talk about the two floods and the two volcanic eruptions so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release all these videos unedited and then I'm gonna make edited versions that are have all the empty spaces cut out and then I'll have the insert the graphics that I promised to show because I want you guys to have a better idea and because I'm more naturally a graphic artist than a video person it's easier for me to communicate that way sometimes it really is helpful I think so <clears throat> we had two floods here one was uh, since I've been here um, I, apparently it's happened more like maybe five or six times that people can remember but of course nobody told me that when I moved in or so, <clears throat> so the first time it happened was whenever Hurricane Lane was, when I get that information, I'll flash the date on the screen. Hurricane Lane hit the big island here and smashed up a bunch of trees. Oh no, was it Hurricane Lane or Cell? I think it was Hurricane Lane. So I think, yeah, so I th there's so many in Hawaii. So um, Hurricane Lane, I think. So it was, or a cell, whichever, hit this area of the big island with 55 inches of rain. Or like, and I don't think that's the full 24 hour period of that date. I th oh, excuse me, I just ate, so I'm burping a little bit. So, <clears throat> hit this part of the island with 55 inches of rain and um how oh, my hair looks horrible that's why i'm wearing a hat because i don't like how my i need haircut and need a color and all that so um <clears throat> anyway so we had 55 inches of rain of like 12 or about 12 hours i think so that 55 inches of rain came rushing down the street right down off uh, off of Mauna Loa and uh, hit about caused the opening in the front of the property because the front of the property used to look completely different before I put all those planters and stuff out there it was just grass that was same level as the road and a bunch had been filled in with rocks which goes against all of environmental ways that things should be done it goes it's probably le it's legal but it's not good it's not environmental and it's it, it's always the wrong thing to do pretty much almost always so <clears throat> so the rain came barreling through the house just i'll i'll Hopefully I'll overlay that video over here so you can see what that looks like. It's also on my channel somewhere. And I put about two feet of water in here and my bed wasn't as high then. And um, I thought there was a couch underneath it and everything on the floor and around the floor got ruined, including the mattress. Cause I didn't, I don't sleep on a normal mattress cause it hurts my back. I usually sleep on, I sleep on special mattresses and stuff it's it's a long story so <clears throat> and that's my special pillow right there that wave pillow so anyway enough about how special everything is so the 
dog died. It got poisoning probably from the poison flood water. Um, it destroyed a lot of my landlord's things. Destroyed a lot of my tools. Yeah, the landlord offered to help. Everybody offered to help. Nobody did came through with anything at all, really. But other others did later, so who cares? Anyway, so uh, then there was another eruption, I think. There was an eruption, a volcanic eruption, and it broke every piece of glass in the house. Um, I wasn't home when it happened. I was babysitting my friend's cat, and it, I think it almost killed the cat because she was really scared, and she almost like, disappeared forever because of that. Like, she ran away for a long time. And uh, TV sets, monitors, dishes, flatware, everything just on the floor, all broken to pieces. Um, and a terrified cat, of course. So that was the first, that was the Mauna Loa, that was the Kilauea Iki crater eruption, the one that resulted in Fisher 8 becoming a little candle of light down at the end of this street where I live. You could went up to the top of the hill you could see this gigantic candle flame from um, Evalu, Pu'u Evalu I guess Fisher 8 or Hill 8 where the lava was coming out you could see it from the top, bottom of the hill then I had another flood and this time I was pissed because I'd actually prepared for the flood but my landlord had forced me to remove part of that flood protection because he just wanted the driveway clear for when the fictional day when his you know piece of crap rust bucket truck would be repaired by somebody who'd want to buy it I mean come on it was already a rust bucket nobody wanted that it was nothing to do but either have it towed away or just leave it there to rust into nothingness and that's what it's doing is it's rusting into nothingness so he made me clear open the driveway, remove my planters. So that resulted in the, that flood getting in too. So that flood flooded in, not as quite as bad as the first one, about 14 inches of water inside the house. And um, that just, I was more prepared because I knew it could happen again So after the first time. So I didn't really lose much, but of course it does a lot of damage. Um, it causes mold to kind of suddenly keep appearing so I have to keep the place painted uh, all the time you see how disgusting the floor gets really quickly I have to keep everything with kills and mold I have to give away computer parts after a couple of years because they all start to fail from the moisture I don't mind it because the garden here is beautiful and when I just have the time to put the attention into it and the tools that I need which I don't have so once again, I'm probably going to go begging for money on Venmo again, because um, I need I need new batteries for my weed whacker. Uh, I need new transportation. I need new tools. I need all kinds of crap that I don't I can't afford right now. And if I don't get it, then I have to I have to figure out a different situation because this is not. What's going on right now is not working for me in any way, for any part of my life, including sexually or sexually, however people say it. I don't care about monetization from YouTube, so, um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to be afraid to say whatever, but yeah, this is not a satisfying situation for me in any way, shape, or form, really, and things have got to get better, or I'm going to get the fuck out of here. And if Trump gets back in... I might just leave anyway, go move to some other country, I don't know. I've heard Portugal's pretty cool, I speak a little Portuguese, Canada's cool, I speak a little French, you know. I've heard it's hard to emigrate to like Japan, but Japan sounds nice, or Ireland, or, or I don't know, Ukraine, why not, why not go to Ukraine for a while and do media work for people there, you know. It'd be fun to meet Philip Itner someday, maybe uh, help him produce a video, meet the people that 
the brave people that report from the front lines over there against the Russians and the Trumpies and the Putins over there. So that was the first flood. That was the first eruption, the second flood. And then there was the second eruption. Oh, wow, look at my nails. I got to repaint them because they're all dirty and gross and chipped and shit. So anyway, uh, fourth, the uh, fourth event, major natural disaster was the second eruption. And it was scary because it was a part of Mauna Loa that doesn't usually erupt. And that you could see from my part of the hill, which meant it was even closer. So at night, you know, it was just a weird looking natural phenomenon because in the evening, I might, if I'm going to have to dig through lots of pictures and videos, but I'll do my best to illustrate as much as I can and show you some of these things. But um, the sun would go down and it goes down in the west, right? <laughs> rise in the east. Yeah, rises in the east, sets in the west. So go down in the west, which is up the hill towards this more towards the summit of Mauna, Mauna Loa and the sun would go down and instead of turning black into night or whatever phase of the moon it is right whatever lightness it is it would stay orange all night long and as long as the eruption was going on it was like that it was just the sun would go down but it would never really set it was just always orange at that part of the hill and that was super fucking weird it looked like it looked like the sun never set for a while. I don't know, a few days. It was only super bright for a while, but you know, those things that um, the lava cools off, uh, the conditions change, the fissures move, and then all of a sudden you can't see them anymore or, or, or they move. So you just have to go elsewhere to see them. So um, I'm gonna do my best to see if I can get some volcano footage it's been forever since I've actually been down to the to the still flowing wet lava. That might be a fun video. Um, I want to get a board. What a part of my Venmo is going to be for is a, I want to get myself a, um, a surfboard because I haven't had one for years. The dude that almost got me killed at Waikiki and several other places. That was how I learned that narcissists can be murderous. And try to get you killed was from him he uh, took me on a business trip or we, we were on a business trip for to do a, um, a database driven website for Chaminade University in those days that was a huge deal because um, very few schools had a database database based website and we were writing our own WordPress so um, in PH, I was I was I was writing the whole thing in WordPress or in PHP, and then um, we just do the icons in Photoshop, and then we teach them how to how to use the system. It was really primitive, probably super hackable, you know, especially by today's standards. But uh, we flew to Oahu to train him how to use it, and he he said, "Hey Adam, let's go swimming at Waikiki. We'll swim from Ala Moana." by the mall and the um, the park and then we'll swim to Waikiki so he's Brazilian he's the one that got me into long distance swimming so we set out across that part of the ocean from <laughs> Alawana Park to Waikiki at night it's about a mile swim a little over a mile I think I'm swimming out there the water's kind of warm and nice and you can tell there's some big fish around, but you're hoping that they're not sharks. And um, I found out later that part is deeply shark infested. You should never ever swim there at night. <laughs> and he probably did that on purpose because that's not the only time he basically tried to get me killed. But anyway, um, about halfway through the swim, I realize he's gone. Like he's. He always had to show off like he was 15 years older than me and a really good surfer he taught me how to surf he's a good athlete he was, knew how to swim really good so he would always show off by swimming in front of me and this is before i could swim faster than him real easily but he would swim in front of me and i'd let him because he always seemed to get offended if i ever did anything better than him 
So, um, he would swim in front of me and then he was gone. So then I swam all the way to the Duke Katamoku statue, which is the other end of Waikiki from Ala Moana. And, and I'm like, he definitely ditched me through halfway through the swim. There's no way that he did the entire swim because it took a, took a while, you know, in the dark and navigating with just the lights from the hotels out off in the distance, you know, pretty, pretty good distance out from the shore. I don't remember how far it was. And I'm there. I am in like nothing but a speedo. That's pretty good in a speedo back then. But I was <laughs> in nothing but a speedo at midnight in Waikiki, and the streets are like deserted practically. Like I saw like almost nobody anywhere. And I ran back to Ala Moana Park and found the car. Oh, oh, and I looked for the car, and the car was. Oh yeah, I found the car, and he was in the car, and the car was locked, and the windows are steaming up, and he's making out with this prostitute, well, this lady that looked like a prostitute, you know, dressed like transparent, transparent see-through vest, where you could see her breast kind of thing, you know, stuff like that, and he was married, and I knew he wasn't happy in his marriage, but this is before I knew much about narcissists, that they just loved to cheat all the time because they just love to do it so he was just cheating on his lovely wife who I adored and thought was wonderful and his you know not spending time with his lovely daughters who were really nice too and this lovely family you know he just didn't like any of them I guess he just had to find these trashy women who are not nearly as good looking or nice or wonderful as his wife was <laughs> So anyway, he was um, making out with this chick, like like a like hot and heavy, like they're going to Pound Town soon, you know. I'm pretty sure, and so um, I didn't know what to do. I was like, "Hey, I'm right here. I'm freezing cold out of the water in my speedo. Am I just gonna go swimming in circles off the beach so that you know I'll stay warm or what? You know, and." So I walked back to the beach where we launched off from and he'd put a towel there. So I was like, oh, okay. Or there was a towel there, which I assumed was from him. So I just used that towel. And then um, I went back to the car and the car was fucking gone. The car was fucking gone. And I was like, oh, fucking asshole. You know, somehow I wasn't surprised. He'd done lots of asshole stuff. It was really bad before and after that so this is before he tried to steal all my equipment so um so yeah he um so he disappeared so i went back to the beach again with the towel because the sand was warmer than or the sand was i don't know if remember if the sand was warmer or what but it was better than hanging out in the parking lot you know at least you're hanging out on the beach at night so um waited there for a while went back the car was there in the exact same spot the chick was gone he was in the driver's seat and i was like dude what just happened what's that lady you were making out with and he's like there was no lady you were imagining it and i was like uh i don't think i was imagining it but i don't i don't know so um yeah, I used to call him Borat because he looked and sounded and acted just like Borat. And I would swear that Sasha Baron Cohen had been to Kauai and had met him and and made Borat after him because he's, he was exactly Borat. He, they, with the mustache and the hair that he had, curly hair he had back then and the bad suits or the weird fit <laughs> suits and stuff was like totally like something he would do. But yeah, and the way he was so misogynistic and just like always acting inappropriately towards women and just really just a fucking funny. So he told me, he tried to gaslight me and tell me that I'd, Im I'd imagine that there was no hooker in the car. There was no woman in the car. And, um, but he told me plenty of other things he and his friends had done and you know and then uh 
I remember I got really pissed one day and mad and I wrote a actually I did a couple times I wrote about the guy that that stole the magazine or that stole the magazine website from me and then sued me for a hundred grand to keep me quiet about it and then uh, and I told him about the business dude the Brazilian business dude scam artist who cheated me with paperwork and the Hawaii tax system and then tried to steal my equipment uh, we had a studio on the south shore of Kauai in an ATV office and he'd split up from his wife and then in, like immediately found this young surfer girl like younger than me by like 10 years and he was like 15 years older than me and started doing all his graphics for her instead of for the company and I didn't know what was going on I was like this I re I owned the company but I was this really young naive kid I was like 20s early 20s like 22 or something so I was making money hand over fist but I didn't know what I was doing I was just by the seat of the pants and he was a horrible scam artist and a terrible businessman but he was successful at it because he was a raging narcissist and he knew how to rip off people really well and how to do it with a smile and make them come back for more. And it was like, you know, so for a while I turned into that kind of person because I didn't know there was any other way to be, you know. So, um, yeah, so that, w that really happened. And then um, one day after he basically drains the company drive resources by doing all the work for his new girlfriend and then suddenly wife and then her ATV touring company um, I come and I'm supposed to work on this reservation system for them and it kept expanding and expanding and I didn't realize I was going into a deep depression because I knew he was trying to screw me over something in me knew but nobody would tell me or explain to me or tell me anything so I didn't realize that he was just pushing me out the door you know push 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 all of a sudden I go to wake up one day and there's a and I'd gotten by that time I got super depressed I tried to go on antidepressants with my therapist to figure out why I was so depressed and it wasn't wasn't because there was anything really wrong with me it's because my life was once again devoid of joy and being fucked up by some evil fucking fuck with who I didn't need in my life, but I had to learn something from. And um, so I got a document saying he was leaving my um, corporation. He was going to exit the LLC as a treasure, but it sounds seems like he couldn't be legally anyway, I found out later, so that might not have even been the right setup, but nobody, t psh, nobody gives you any real information in the business world, you know, they give you as little data as possible because they want to make, it's a narcissistic system, they always want to make more money than you, you know, so anyway, um, they want to extract anyway, maximum, you're no, you're not, you're almost never getting what you pay for in the business world. It's just why Apple is such a piece of shit, especially now. It's overpriced crap. You know, I was an Apple person for 30 years, and then I learned better. So anyway, um, well, their iPhones are pretty good, but you still can't do what you want with them. So um, I went, uh, so I got that paper on my, on my door, a legal document. <laughs> this wasn't the first and last time to have crappy legal documents served on me so um for by evil narcissistic fucks so i went down to my our studio which was my military trailer i supposedly bought it from his new family that was supposedly also his only new client that that was not our company client uh that he was working on a company you know company time and company resources pretty much but he was kind of making it a gray area if you know what I mean so uh, I went down to the military trailer where our stuff was on the ATV tour lot and in Koloa and on the south shore of Kauai and there's a fucking padlock on the door and it 
had its own lock and in those days on Kauai people just didn't even with computers people just didn't lock shit so it wasn't really it wasn't something we had on the door we didn't have a padlock on the door we had just had a regular lock and um i was like oh fuck you know like i'm how am i gonna get my equipment out of here so i went into the atv office and andre is sitting there on a different computer suddenly <laughs> like in one day he'd done this he's moved to, to a different computer did a whole different setup inside the office and, and i was like what the fuck is going on with you who's fucking trying to take my equipment he goes i'm not playing games with you adam because he has his in his borat voice you know i am not trying to steal your equipment and i was like yeah you are so i, I said you better give me the fucking keys to that padlock right now i went up nobody answered me they all just stared at me like like I deserved this, you know, all this fucking family then. I'm sure they regret that now, but yeah, so they went out to the trailer and the padlock had been unlocked. And uh <laughs> Oh my god, I just you just reminded me of another story. Oh my god. So uh yeah, so I went in there, threw all my equipment into the car. But the trailer is still mine, but so I didn't know, you know, but I just didn't trust that I would have the equipment, but he stole the trailer from me too, but they paid for that later because somebody got pissed off at the way they behaved and burnt down their whole operation over there. But yeah, that was pretty shitty. That was like the second major time I got screwed over in business really bad. And then, uh, then it happened again with a friend. They really tried to make us look bad. They did everything in the book to screw us over, and that was a whole other situation and the reason I left Kauai and came to Big Island. Some water, I'll be right back. Pause the video. I'm out of coffee, which is probably good this time of night, but um, I have some decaf in there. Oh yeah, maybe I'm, oh fuck, the microwave. No, just hold on. Microwave's broken. <laughs> I'm out of coffee. <laughs> okay, hold on. Everything's kind of falling apart. Coffee started. So, uh, snacks accomplished. Snack accomplished. Um, so, let's see. I'll probably have some protein powder coffee for dessert. So, um... Uh, okay, so I was going to talk about Koke'e and what happened to my friend there. Last story, I think, of part six. Last video for tonight. So, um, I think. So, my friend in Koke'e, which is a beautiful forest reserve on Kauai, she was very innovative. She used to live on this island. She'd moved to Kauai. And she had a massively narcissistic cheating ex who was fucking up her life and fucked up her life here forcing her to move to Kauai so she uh, founded the Volcano Art Center here and then she went to Kauai about for 27 years she was the the um, executive director of the Koke'i Museum and heading up all the during that time all the forest conservation programs and inventing new ones and created the new CCC and uh, which I helped her with all of that stuff but um, because of loose links Luke's lips sink ships um, on the part of all of us including me I'm not by the way when I tell these stories I'm not trying to make out like I'm innocent <laughs> and I'm not telling you everything that happened on purpose because you would be shocked at some of the shit I did too, because I used to be kind of a baddie, a baddie or a badass or just bad. <laughs> so just take your pick, bad, baddie or badass, depending. So, um, yeah, but people would push me, so they do shitty things thinking that I had a kick me sign built in. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to slide around on my chair here on my knees. It sounds really nuts, but 
I'm a former surfer, so I deal better with situations like that. So anyway, um, oh god. So at the end of my ex is highly narcissistic ex who hated my mom because she reminded him of himself. Hold on, I gotta fix the lights. Lights are all fucked up. Computer, set the lights to white. Okay, except now you can't see my face because of the hat. Okay. I'm just gonna leave it on because my hair is my hair is atrocious right now. I didn't take the time to do it. Maybe I will take the time to do it. Hold on. Second bedroom light to orange. Computer. Set the lights to 90%. Okay, it looks the same, but okay. So, um, computer, stop. Computer, stop. Stop. No. Shut up. Computer, do not disturb. Computer, do not disturb for one hour. Okay. So, um, okay was the end of my 10 year long relationship. It was the one that was closest to a real marriage, but for some reason never developed into a marriage since, uh, I learned later on about narcissists, how they string you along for your whole life if you let them. So, uh, yeah, so. I was in a relationship with him. It was, we thought it was cool, but it was super toxic. It was bad. It was just bad. Computer, do not disturb for one hour. I'm unplugging it. Fuck you, Alexa. Um, <clears throat> so it, towards the end of my relationship with him, I'd just been realizing that I was really unsatisfied with our relationship. I'd caught him online. He said he was just underwear shopping, but he was buying like freshly used undies from like online models. And it was like he'd gotten scammed on Craigslist a couple times, even though I told him to be careful. And I was an online person, so I knew all that stuff because he had to do it secretly and on his own because who knows what he was really doing, you know. So I started creating a fake po profile. And then I realized you know, maybe I should just go ahead and cheat on him. And I hadn't cheated on anybody for a long time. And I was proud of myself for that. But, uh, yeah. <sighs> Eyebrows are out of control. I'm fucking vain, but older I get, the more vain I get. So anyway, um, he, uh, was cheating on me doing who knows what, or probably cheating on me. I don't know. I'll, I'll probably never know. But, uh, so I started going up to Koke'e to get away from things, and, uh, a mutual friend had introduced me to the museum director up there. Um, and she was doing all this forest conservation work, but, and she was doing a lot of things that I wanted to do, so I kind of volunteered, and we became pretty thick as thieves. She introduced me to her Buddhist practice, and that helped a lot. She told me I, I didn't need therapy, I just needed that chanting practice, which was kind of accurate at that time because it wasn't, it, once again, it wasn't the depression of just, you know, being depressed. It was the depression of being probably screwed over yet again in life, you know, by yet another fucking narcissist or the umpteenth, 18th, 27th time, you know. And so I went up to Koke'e. All of us talked too much to the board members. We didn't realize that they were trying to get her fired because she was liberal and they were all rich and conservative living in Koke'e probably illegally or just, you know, doing whatever they wanted because they were rich and, you know, she was not rich and she was liberal. So, um, so anyway, wow, my hair's dry as fuck. 
Okay, so anyway, um, so I would go up to Coquet, we'd work together, and mysterious bad things started happening, which is something that when I always knew there's narcissists involved, is that they, all of a sudden things in your life start going wrong, you know? People start putting you down for no reason without knowing you, you know, they, they, they get people turned against you, they get you stalked, gang stalked, they get you threatened they steal things from you so they it was this whole disaster but it culminated with me refusing to give him passwords and him firing her from the for no reason from the museum just trying to tear her apart whole big drama you know and the nature itself seemed to revolt against it it was pretty remarkable and uh as we were trying to, in fact, that started to seem to happen a lot around then and ever since then. So, um, weird weather events. So, uh, the, I was parked in the parking lot in her car trying to, because she, he'd been confronting her and she knew that she, or her boss, that is the guy that ran the place, been confronting her and threatening her. And, um, he sent her an email like an afternoon, an inappropriate time when she'd already been fired. Like he wanted her up there. She wanted her to give him the passwords and stuff. And she told me she wanted me to go up there and tell him in person that we would not give him the passwords because we knew that he was going to erase all our work and pretend that I'd been ripping off the museum and that the museum was spending money on nothing. So his idea was that he was going to erase all the work we did, all the stuff on the, um, what was the st storage the shared um storage file storage service at the time i think it was there was dropbox and there was like one other one i think it was dropbox and um the website so he was going to delete the website and the entire dropbox and there was stuff we didn't have backed up yet so i went over there to deliver the news and Called, I told him I wouldn't get in the password yet. All the em other employees sitting there, including the ones he tried to sabotage me with. Um, I'll tell that. I'll expand on that later. There's so much more that happened. And he called me a filthy bastard for not giving the password. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll admit to being a filthy bastard. <laughs> I'm pretty filthy right now. I haven't showered for like a day. So anyway, um, so I went outside to her car got in the car, started it up, tried to drive out, and there's a fucking chain and a padlock across the exit. Once again with the padlocks, huh, you fucking narcissist. You like to lock people in and lock people out at will, huh? Whenever you feel like it, whether it's legal or not, don't you? Yeah, and whether it's welcome or not, and whether that boundary's been established or not, don't you, you fucking pieces of shit narcissist. So anyway, God, I swear. <laughs> I hate being a snap case, but sometimes it's useful. So anyway, um, so I got in the car, the chain was there, I couldn't exit the parking lot. I got out and yelled at the maintenance guy, the one who tried to sabotage me before. And uh, he came out, he ran out all nervous, you know, you know, and it was you know, like, fuck you, fucking fat piece of shit, you know, that's what I was thinking of, you know, not a very nice thing to say, but he was a piece of shit, that guy, I don't trust him, I still don't trust him, all the shit he did after she left was even, some of it was even worse, so, he, uh, he came out all nervous, like I was gonna beat him up or something, I've never fucking, I've, like, never hit anybody in my whole life, except one time I slapped my mom, and that was, not hard and it was just to break her out of her loop because she was in a fucking screaming rage hissy fit loop so anyway yeah so i've never hit anybody basically so yeah so um <clears throat> not a person <laughs> i've destroyed plenty of things so um yeah so i drove the car out of the parking lot and i'm driving it down the hill from camp office and um all of a sudden he's 
her boss is attached to the car, is dragging himself because I'm driving off. So he's, his body is dragging along the ground, <laughs> screaming at me that I'm a filthy bastard. He's hanging onto the door and trying to grab the steering wheel out of my hands and give me the password, give me the password, screaming at me, clutching at the car. So I was just like, fuck, this is, this guy's just a piece, big a piece of shit as I thought he was. I didn't know the word for narcissist back then. I didn't know any of that stuff. So I didn't know that's what he was too, right? Now the guy's scared of me. Like he sees me coming. He like runs behind trees to escape me. He's done that for the last like 12 years. But I haven't seen him for years, of course, because I haven't been on Koi. But yeah, so, um, so that happened. <laughs> finally got him shaken off the car i just pried his fingers off the door you know so he wouldn't hurt himself you know and then i drove back down to her house because she's the only real only really illegal resident of coquette would be her and you know probably any hawaiian that wanted to live there because hawaiians are allowed to live wherever they want according to kingdom law is my understanding or the modern interpretation of kingdom law so anyway um <clears throat> so i told her what happened we called the cops the, co <laughs> the cops took my report and it was funny because he's like the civilian commander of the military base over there <laughs> so basically reporting the military commander of the whole west side of Kauai <laughs> to the cops <laughs> But I told him, faithfully told him the story about what he did. But, you know, sure enough, not long after she was ejected from Kauai for all of that, and I was the only, ended up being one of the only, me and like two other local guys who helped, and her son helped her get her shipping container and get you know, filled with all their stuff so she could move back to Big Island. And they made her move out at Christmas time <laughs> for absolutely no reason just to be jerks you know because that's one other thing narcissists like doing is they like fucking ruining your holidays so that's how i ended up on big island and um yeah and they succeeded they succeeded in destroying me for a while because i really ended up homeless that time and that's a whole other story my whole homeless story that was a real fucking trip maybe that'll be the next part of the video this overly long video anyway i love anybody that stuck around long enough to watch all this my drivel i enjoy my bad ashy looking hair on the overly bright lights and uh i'll see y'all soon and um if you can afford to donate something to this channel's venmo i will posted either on the screen or in the description or both or whatever because I need equipment and I need replacement tools I need a new chainsaw I'd prefer to get another electric DeWalt and just treat it better or maybe there's a better version of it now or maybe there's an electric steel or something I just don't want to have I just don't want to have gas anything I haven't had gas anything for a really long time and I don't want to have gas anything ever again so there's nothing gas here everything is electric or slightly solar but not very solar all right love y'all aloha have a good night I wish my brother George was here or Diane Russell or five eggs or Benny Loco Boston Brian or maybe Richard Ojeda. Wow, it'd be fun to have like, you know. Well, let's let's try to use some of their clips and shit. Maybe then I can someday talk to some of my friends and get them to show up on this channel too, just for fun. Because this saying that this channel is nothing. <laughs> this is just for me to babble at people and be really long-winded and tell my unnecessary stories. All right, much love and good night. Aloha po. Bonsoir. Guten Abend. Guten Nacht. Buen Noche.